The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. I posted the charts of the uh, German DAX, the 60-minute and the uh, four-hour chart. You can see there's still support coming in after the big sell-off due to the uh, problems with the uh, uh, what's going on in the Middle East, folks? Uh, people ask me, you know, what's going to happen. I mean, I <laughs> you could ask just about anybody before you ask me because I I really don't follow it too much. I I see how the news handles it, but you know, the crude oil is down two dollars a barrel, so it hasn't really done very much. And gold's down thirty two dollars an ounce, actually thirty three dollars. You know, the harmonic number in gold is uh, thirty two, and we went down thirty three from fifteen ninety down to fifteen uh, fifty seven. That's really strong support there folks because there's a gap at that level and um, the first sign of good strength if we can get it above 1575 today that will tell us that we're looking that platinum that we were watching came very very close in fact it is very very close to that really strong support at uh, 960 that we talked about in the newsletter and we also talked about it yesterday while we were on the show we uh, we have a, a really great guest today folks one of our standards is going to be here Sam Crawford is going to be here here. So uh, that'll be at 930. We'll be able to chat with him about some things. And also, I wanted to mention that I don't know if you folks know this or not, but all the markets will be closed tomorrow, January the 8th. It's a holiday in Tupelo, Mississippi. And those of you that are fans of the King, Elvis Aaron Presley's birthday is tomorrow. He was born in the little town of Tupelo, Mississippi. And I have a couple of friends from that area, uh, students that I've trained, which is uh, pretty cool. They do have a parade every year. So that's that's pretty nice. I want to spend just a second here talking about Tesla. Uh, well, I'm going to do Tesla first, and then I'll do the other one, because there's a lot of... Here's Tesla, folks. Let me just go through. The reason why I, th I think this is important is because of the strategy that we have here. If you if you look here, folks, take a look. Um, You'll see here. This is this is Tesla, and if you remember, there are several uh, hedge fund guys. Uh, Jim Chamos was one, and and I don't remember the other one. And from what I understand, he's still short. But the the key to the key of this this chart here is the the, the little square where you see point D. We have a really nice A B C D. Look look at the gap, folks, from 250 to $300. It gapped up $50 in one day. Boy, if that wasn't a, a sign of being very, very uh, cautious or not, I don't know. But look at the bottom that it made. It made a beautiful bottom at the 61% retracement there at 210, and here's where we are now. The whole key here is, you know, he's been on, uh, Chase and Chano, Chamos has been on there uh, several times on CNBC, and he's talking about his, his, permi uh, his permission um, uh <laughs> Mr. Z is asking if I've ever been to Graceland for dinner. I've been to Graceland uh, several times, three times, and I'll tell you, Mr. Z, I, it's a it's a beautiful house. He paid a hundred thousand dollars for it, I believe, in 1956 or 57. But it's actually quite small. You know, they, they've they've expanded it quite a bit, but uh, it's pretty small. Those of you that have ever, you know, see. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, well, anyway, let's move on here to, t to chat. I don't understand that one from uh, David. I don't know what the – have you ever shot your TV? No. No, I never have done that. But one of my cousins threw his cap pistol through – I have to tell that story. David White has talked about I've ever shot my TV. No, I've not shot my TV, but my cousin back in 19 – one of my little cousins – uh, back in 1957, when we first hadn't even had color TV yet, he was watching Roy Rogers, and Roy was out of bullets, and he took his cap pistol and threw it into the TV and cracked the screen. <laughs> and that's a true story, believe it or not. Anyway, let's move on here, and we'll move on to the uh, – uh, get on to the next one right here to, to take a look at. I want to show you the long-term chart here in Tesla because this has been a heck of a stock. Uh, to be a owner of, 
And as you can see here, it's one of the big ones. I, I really don't think uh, you'll, you'll see here that this move we had uh, way down here when it was $1.95, that was right at a 78% retracement, a beautiful ABCD pattern there. And if you went back and looked at the low from 15, that would have been a 382. And now we had these. Uh, there's a missing some data here that, folks, that this is there's not really gaps there between uh, 330 and where we are right now. I've switched data providers, but the, the price today is is correct. We're setting it at 451, which is that 1.27 expansion. The first question someone will ask me, is that a three drive to a top pattern? Uh, it is, except for the fact that it doesn't have good symmetry. And I believe, I believe it's because we're missing that data in there. So there might be a little bit of a little bit of resistance up here, 451. Go back to look at Tesla here, folks, back in 2014. You'll see the three drive to a top pattern, very, very symmetrical. Drive one in 2013, drive two, 2014, and then and in the middle of 2014, you have the third drive, and from there it drops, uh, it drops from 270, it drops 120 points down to the near 61% retracement, and then has another rally up. So when you're doing these patterns, folks, the reason why they're important is they help you with risk control, and that's why you know I think it's important to remember when you're looking at patterns, that's what they do provide you. They do provide you something that says you have some control over your risk and in the risk reward equation that's all you really have so sort of keep that in mind I wanted to mention the FTSE here too folks because uh, we've had a, a very big uh, ABCD pattern complete here in the FTSE and it has not backed off very much you'll notice here over the past seven days we've only been able to back off a very very minuscule amount that that could be signs that this market could be ready you know to go higher now yesterday uh, in the S&P, we had a, a perfect Gartley pattern form up at their uh, ABCD 786 retracement up there at that uh, uh, 3251 level. We got as high as 3254. We've backed off a little bit from that level, but that's a very important uh, level to look at because if we get above that, you know, we can go higher. I know there's a lot of news about, you know, what's going to happen. And when you see one million people uh, attending a funeral, it's going to be uh, pretty exciting to see what's going to happen because they get very, very uh, tough over there. Okay, we got a call from Mr. Z in Philadelphia. John, what can I do for you, my friend? Uh, segue uh, from uh, the uh, FTSE uh, daily chart you've just done into its underlying currency. Could you assist me with that, please? What would you like to know if I could help you with it? Uh, you want to know where it's going to go? Uh, yes, perhaps. Perhaps it'd be worthwhile uh, to take a look at your hourly or four-hour chart. Sure. If you have that on your docket. Um, uh, just I, an observation. Back I, on December 23rd, the British pound fell down to 129, which was an exact Fibonacci uh, 382 support mark, and it rallied nicely. It then rallied into a high December 31st, oh. up at 130, no, almost 133, which was an exact Fibonacci 618. Okay, uh, stay with us, John. We'll be right back. We've got to pay some bills here. We'll be right back with Mr. Z from Philadelphia. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Mr. Z from Philadelphia. John, I posted the hourly chart for the pound versus the dollar, and uh, we hit the 61% retracement of that big move back on January 2nd. And the last night, we hit the 61% retracement from that high, and we backed off about 100 pips, and we're sitting right at the 61% retracement of the other. So we're right in this middle of the trading range. If you're looking for a place to buy the British pound, this is it. Because you don't have to risk more than about 40 pips at this point based on, you know, the ratios and the patterns the way I see it. Do you see it the same way, differently? or yeah, uh, what's your it, Well, yeah, sort of. I see what you're saying, and that is the answer to my question, so thank you for answering that. Um, just uh, let me flush out the question or my question a bit further, if I might. Uh, in Tiger TV, your hourly chart on the uh, British pound, U.S. dollar pair, it's just a beautiful textbook example of a market moving to and reversing from Fibonacci retracement levels. As I look at that uh, image, that December 23rd low was also a Fib 382 support mark. Mm -hmm. And then uh, December 31st was a Fib 618 resistance mark. The low on the third, that was a Fibonacci 618 support mark. I actually, I bought it just shortly after that. And then this morning, just after that reversal that we see from the 618, I uh, booked a gain and uh, just, you know, took my marbles home in our flats. And uh, so uh, that's just a beautiful textbook uh, uh, pattern. Mm -hmm. And now that this pattern has uh, tightened up, in other words, mm -hmm. uh, each move is getting progressively smaller, mm -hmm. each respecting FIB levels, uh, and we're now in the middle of the most recent range, but it's grown increasingly tight. Um, you, as a trader, you'd actually buy this minor dip against the 618, anticipating what? Please. Well, I'm anticipating another ABCD move that may take us up to the 78% level at the 13380. Because if you look at that last low that we made on January 3rd, which was the 618, if you make that ABCD from the 23rd of January, that ABCD level takes you to 13380. Well, if I buy it here, 
at this 132.20 that we're setting at right now. I only have to put my stop at 130.70, so I'm only risking several $300. And so if I'm wrong, I lose $300. But if I'm right, you know, I've got a, a seven to one risk reward ratio if that happens to work. So that's what I'm saying. I, if we get below 131, uh, even I know I'm probably wrong, and I'll probably even tighten my stop up. But that's that's what I'm looking at right now. The fact that it hits these numbers so perfectly should amaze people, because it's one of the larger currencies of the world, and the euro does the same thing. So does the Japanese yen, which we'll discover. And we'll talk about in just a few minutes. But uh, it's amazing how these currencies follow these uh, numbers, and they're all based on you know sacred science. So you know it's a little better than fundamentals, in my opinion. But that's all I can say. No, you know, it. Uh, uh, if you are a skilled trader and you're sufficiently well capitalized, uh, this this particular illustration um, uh, is just such a fabulous teaching tool to display how uh, a market, especially these foreign currency markets, can indeed be your bank account um, if you're uh, disciplined and stick uh, stick to your knitting. Um, so thanks for that answer. I might ask you as I uh, leave the call, Larry, would, uh, would you kindly go over the Australian dollar? It's had a good setback here in the past couple of days, coming back into support. So we can all see where the FIB numbers are coming back into support. But I'm wondering if you would share with us your kind of view using the daily and or the weekly charts and whether you suspect the Aussie dollar is poised, uh, you know, to move uh, lower by quite a bit or higher by quite a bit. I'd appreciate that, and I'll, uh, I'll hang up and listen, and uh, thanks so much. You bet. Okay, uh, for, I've posted the chart for the Australian dollar versus the U.S. dollar in the room, and you notice up at that 170 level, we had a big ABCD pattern. We went 30 pips higher, and we got down to the 168, uh, 70 level today. Uh, that's the 61% retracement. We have three higher bottoms. You can see those in August, October, and December. That's a 135 pattern that we got from our good friends uh, Roy Longstreet and his son Bill. Uh, that worked really nicely and now we're backing off that would give us another 135 pattern again high buying higher bottoms and that would be the 61 percent retracement at 6870 now this is happening well half of well not half but a lot of australia is under tremendous uh natural disaster with these fires it's just really incredible i have quite a few students over there fortunately all of them are okay but uh, some of their friends uh, are certainly in distress so there's very strong support at that 6840 level in the Australian dollar versus the US dollar as long as that can hold then we have a chance to you know to keep uh, keep going higher but remember this is a long term bear market it's been going for quite some time and uh, any move below that 6750 uh, level would tell us that we're going to go a whole lot lower but right now that's where we're watching as far as looking at a weekly chart on this nothing will be different the only thing is it tells you a little, little bigger support resistance, maybe some different ratios. But when you're looking at a weekly chart, you have to risk a lot more because the ranges are bigger, and that makes it difficult. And I'm a little uh, averse to, to doing that. So that's one of the reasons why I, I sort of uh, you know shy away from it. Now, the other one that I wanted to mention since we were talking about the currencies that is very, very important because Tom talks about this uh, – you know, all the time, and that is this uh, the, this yen, this dollar yen, this risk on, risk off. And I, I mentioned this several times, and especially last week, that we were right at that 382 retracement at 10770, folks. We hit it spot on. And uh, that was uh, that was yesterday. And now, look, that was in the midst of a, you know, a major crisis. And they were, they're not even afraid uh, to, to come in and, and put risk on. That was telling that something is not right. That they don't know what's going on over there, and I don't think anybody else does either. But all, all I'm telling this is a huge currency, man. This, numbered, this is number two right after the, uh, the dollar euro. You know, so this is uh, this is really a big deal. We get below 107.50, the game will change. But right now, 
right at that 382 retracement. Folks, so stop and think about this. We've had a, a damn near a, a war out there. In fact, it, for some people, it was those that didn't quite make it through. But uh, look at that. That yen held up extremely well. I, th I think that must mean something. It is called the Fed, the Fed put. Well, whatever the Fed wants to do. Uh, that's okay. That that I don't read that stuff. Uh, you know, I, I just look at the charts, Maria. You know, I, I'm an old country boy. That's all I can tell you. So that's about it. Oh, I had. Oh dear. We. Oh, the break is coming. We got Arch Crawford coming up. Um, Coming up at the at the at the half hour here, we want to chat with Arch. If we we'll have some time at the end. I had a question for one of our listeners. Um, uh, the question is, when did you start trading less than a daily chart? I've always done that, Marshall. I've always been watching hourlies and four hours, but that's always the case. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Stay tuned for Arch Crawford. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the markets opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Arch Crawford from Tucson, Arizona, Commodity pers uh, Crawford Perspectives on the line. Sam, I look at this headlines up here, and I want to give you a great deal of salutations. We remain 
long, 200% using full margin, but not for long. God bless you, buddy. I, you caught that last run. I think it's great. What do you see going on in the world with the oil market and the stock market and the gold market? Those are the three questions that I've been hit with this morning before you even came on the air, the air to talk about. So you've got the mic. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, well, the, the thing that's... Um you said the gold market, the oil market? Yes, and the stock market. And the stock market. Well, the gold market um, made this uh, very nice run up. We gave the long-term buy signal on it on, I think it was June the 3rd, before the breakout. <clears throat> and then it moved up higher, and then it broke out of the uh, long-term base pattern. Um and that was a very powerful seven-year signal. And uh, so I'm going to like it for a long time. Uh, it ran up um, to uh, around uh, 1570s, yeah, 1570, and has mm -hmm. been in a three-month flag pattern uh, mm -hmm. drifting lower. And it broke out on the 23rd. Of the, of the flag pattern on the 23rd of December. So I firmly believe that it is beginning a new maximum move. And, of course, um, yesterday morning it spiked up over the old high, the old recent multi-year high. So I can't say anything bad about gold. <laughs> Well, it's pretty hard when it gaps up like it does. Not only that, but it backed off $32, Arch, and it couldn't even fill the gap at 15.55. I thought that was uh, important. You know, we got down to 15.57. I watched that and I said, uh-oh, that must mean something, you know, pretty important. If you in your chart here that you put on your uh, in your letter, you sold the, the breakout. Uh, and uh, back back in May, and uh, it says, can it do more? It's pretty much the same pattern that you're looking at right now, isn't it? Only this one has a monster gap up, I guess related to the Iranian thing, but it's still a gap. And, uh, right, it, this, it sure is. That, well, that, that, uh, that would give of, it that, – that, excuse me, Arch, go ahead. Now I was going to change over to oil, but did you want to say something more about this? No, no, I just think it looks like that the gold really has legs, so you have to pay really close attention to it. We'll, we'll do the oil next here, and we'll uh, put it up so the folks can take a look at it. What did you think of the re, uh, what's going on over there? I know you have a lot of clients over in the Middle East. Uh, did they tell you anything? Because we hear some things that uh, Trump has uh, opened the gates of hell and he won't be able to close them. I mean, that's one of the comments that I got from someone from um, uh, Kuwait that I deal with, and I, I don't know what they talk about, but uh, those are little scary, scary sayings anyway. Well, the, the thing that's scary to me is <laughs> the, what the planets are doing coming up, uh, yeah. and the sun and the moon, of course, uh -huh. and uh, we have a lunar eclipse on Friday. Yeah. In fact, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in there this, yeah. this, uh, this week. Yeah. And on Friday, there's the, uh, <clears throat> the lunar eclipse. And um, sesquiquadrate Mars, tight, tight alignment with Mars, which is the god of war, as you know. Uh, sun conjunct Mercury, both semi-square Mars, mm -hmm. may be a market high. Mm -hmm. uh, Uranus direct station. Uranus start, starts going back forward, appearing from the Earth. Mm -hmm. Uh, also on Friday. That is a big pile up of stuff happening on the same day. Then two days later, we get the first uh, Saturn Pluto conjunction. Now, Saturn Pluto is about a 30 year cycle, and um, it has generally been associated <sighs> with uh, fairly significant pauses in the economy. So, uh, well, was, and the I'm first one is Sunday, I think it is, isn't it? It's the 12th yeah, or the 13th. Then, Actually, depending on where you are in the country, it's uh, late, late on the 12th or early, early on the 13th. Uh -huh. 
Wow, they've got a bunch of them. Boy, that, I, I just can't remember seeing this many important things between the 10th and the 13th. So that'll be really interesting, uh, you know, to look at. Getting back to the oil market, you know, the fact that we couldn't get much above that $64 a barrel level, given the fact that we we're looking at, uh, you know, possible war, I, I, I didn't think the oil acted very well, actually. It, it, maybe it means it's not any, any danger of a war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You just never know for sure. Well, the the high uh, so far in the last year or so um, was actually in April at 66.60. <clears throat> and then there was the drone attack. So we we did scream above the, the drone attack high, um, which is technically strong. Um, and it's Pulled back, it like yesterday looked like a possible one day reversal. I don't think I don't know if it went actually negative on the day. I don't think it did. Uh, uh, it did but anyway, it did, it, it's, it's day, negative now, morning. so it's a yeah, two day yeah. possible reversal. But um, I'm positive on that as well on the intermediate to long term. Whatever little pullback we may get here is possible. But if we if we do get things exploding in the Middle East, it, it will explode. Mm -hmm. But uh, as, a, as I agree with you that it didn't do enough to say, okay, this is really, really bad. We're going to war tomorrow. <laughs> I don't see that. Yeah. Well, you know, they only have 84 million people, and it's twice the size of Texas, so they're a little overmatched. The problem is all the other countries that will be, you know, battling sabers against us, and so we'll see. I, I, I tell you, Sam, I've been doing this as long as you were. We were four months apart in age, and I tell you, I just never thought I'd see the United States going through such turmoil. I mean, it just— uh, it's just really, truly amazing. Anyway, let's get back to the markets. People don't like they don't like to hear this stuff. On the t on the first year page here, you have a really interesting graph that I think the folks would like to talk about, and that is the effect of um, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Facebook on these averages. You want to discuss that a little bit? Sure. Um, Go ahead. Well, the thing is, that these averages are moving up. Uh, very rapidly, and they've moved a long, long way. But um, these five stocks have accounted for close to 17% of the moves, which means the last time that happened was in 1999. And, uh, of course, we went down for what, two years after that, including 9-11, and the week after 9-11, after we reopened the stock market after a few days, uh, was the worst week since the fall of France in 1940. Wow. Wow. And so uh, we are back up to that again, where we are. those five stocks took uh, so much percent of the, um, the movement, accounted for so much of it, and the rest of the market is not moving that much. And, you know... Uh, okay, Sam, we got to pay a few bills, Sam. Stay with us. We'll come right back, okay? Okay, write a, a check week. and come back. You got it. It checks in the mail, Bubba. <laughs> All right. If you're in the CD market and looking for secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspectives. Sam, on your first page there, you've got some vital signs. Do you want to give us a little recap of what you're looking at here? We, we went 200% long early in uh, December, and we're saying um, to get out of the shorts and, and get, get out of the longs and go short on uh, the 9th and 10th, which I think is uh, Thursday and Friday of this week. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I'm really startled to see all that astrology stuff. I don't look at it. You know, I watch the new moons and the eclipses and stuff. But when I see all those planets coming in there, boy, there's something really big going to happen. That uh, I don't know if it's going to be related to what's going on in the world, but it might be. I don't know. But that's a, that's a lot, of, lot of planets in four days, isn't it? Yes. Actually, I, I'm saying uh, in the, the current letter, um, the Saturn... Pluto make a dangerous downer, and the formation, including the other two, is extremely tight. Mars, violence and war, moves in to this aggravating pile on the 14th and 15th. Catch up mm -hmm. your emergency supplies and hole up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Uh, last month, we said, uh, said it this way, qualities of Saturn and Pluto include a hard and unfeeling disposition, cold-hearted, severe, a tendency to violence, a martyr, a mass murderer, and that's right out of Ebertine's book from 1940. And I said some really important page one happenings will occur in the several parts of the world during this one-week period, January 9 to 16, this may include the death of many, the death of important folk, um, revolutionary violence involving crowds, greater than normal earthquakes. Hey, we got a 6.4 this morning in Puerto Rico. Wow. Well, they, they don't need any trouble down there, and they already have some. So <laughs> they, had, they had three. The, the largest one was the 6.4 oh. so far. Wow, that's a lot. Well, listen, uh, you want to tell the folks how they can uh, reach you? Uh, Crawford Perspectives, or just search Arch Crawford in uh, in uh, quotation marks. Okay. And it'll take you right to my uh, website, 
and uh, you can order the letter there, or you can call the office at uh, 520-577-1158, or well, email friend. Crawford Perspectives at earthlink.net, or, yeah, that's good. All right, listen, pal, I'll have you on again soon, and maybe after this uh, stuff settles down in a week or so, we'll discuss how it turned out. But uh, congratulations on ca catching that big run-up in December. I think that's pretty cool. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, folks. That's Sam Crawford from – Arch Crawford from Tucson, Arizona, and we certainly appreciate having him on, and we'll have him on again sometime uh, in the future, especially with all these things that are happening astrologically. We will be uh, having uh, Norm Winsky on. We'll be on the night. That's on Thursday, the day before, to talk about some of these things also. So we'll, uh, we're will we going to put uh, Norm's feet to the fire and – get some ideas of what he's uh, really looking at. Okay, let's move on. The market's selling off a little bit. We've now come down about 20 handles from the uh, high that we made last night at 32.53. That was a perfect Gartley pattern up there, folks. I posted it uh, in a video last night, uh, early last night, uh, while it was up there, and then it started to sell off. Whether it continues or not, you know, I'm not sure, but we'll be we'll be watching it through the rest of the, the time that we have uh, T today and tomorrow. Okay, let's move on to one other thing that we want to be looking at. Uh, let's move on to a couple of things that I wanted to cover here. I covered that Japanese yen because that's really important for risk control, folks. That that certainly is. There's just really nothing that you can say about it that doesn't mean it, you know anything. Okay, um, I, another question was about one of the currencies that we were also looking at. That's this Canadian dollar, folks. This Canadian dollar is a, a really big one, and I wanted to get it up here. Oh, dear, did I miss it? Shut the front door and raise the rent. I did. I missed the Canadian dollar. Boy, oh, boy. Anyway, it's at a major point. Just give me a second, folks. It's important enough to take a look at this Canadian dollar here, so it'll only take me a second to pull it up, and uh, then we'll be able to look at it, and you'll see where we are because we are at a major spot, and we've already turned up today. So let's take a quick look at it. Uh, so we're going to be able to see. I didn't realize it was moving that fast. Okay, let's get this up here. Hold on one second. It'll only take me a minute, and then I'll at least that's what I said. Oh, I wanted to cover one other thing that's really important uh, from yesterday. Here it is right here. Let's get this Canadian dollar up so the folks can take a look at it. It uh, stopped right at right where it should have. And we'll see whether that's it. Yeah, there was a very large earthquake in Puerto Rico since some white light out to those folks because it makes it pretty good. Folks, yesterday at the end of the show, a gentleman called in uh, asking about the three drive uh, to a top pattern that we were looking at potentially in palladium. I wanted to get this up here to clarify what we were talking about. If you'll take a look at this 30-minute chart that we were talking about. Now, you can see today's action in here. We got all the way up to... Uh, 2015 was been the high so far. That was right at the exact 1.27. But the three little arrows that you see, that's what he was talking about, the three peaks. You can see the domed house, which is the arrow with the square. That's three peaks in the domed house. It's, it's not very symmetrical. That's the that's the toughest part, but it is a, it is a minor one. You do get a little bit of a pullback. But what we're watching now, as you'll see, we had that big tail close at 207. The thing dropped 25 bucks, folks. Uh, down to, uh, uh, excuse me, $15, down to 1992, and then it ran another $25 up to make the 1.27 expansion there at uh, 2015, and now it's sold off, you know, since that level. So that's, uh, you know, all I'm saying is if you have to ask the question of whether it's a three drive or something, it's probably not. You got to make it really clear, you know, to see if that's, uh, if that's going to be the case, and we'll certainly do that. When we get back from this next break, uh, someone asked me a question that uh, is a little tough for me to answer, but I'm going to answer it. It's going to be um, bring back a lot of memories, but I do want to bring that question up. But the question was, do I have any regrets? And uh, I'm going to answer that question. And, uh, you know, that's looking in the rearview mirror, which I don't like to do very often. And, in fact, if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't do anything different. But there are a few regrets that I had along the way. And uh, I will uh, certainly go over the one that, to me, was uh, the most important. And, uh, you know, it was uh, 
<laughs> related to my grandmother. So we will uh, we'll cover that when we get back from the break here, and then we'll see what the rest of the markets are doing. I'll double check. I think we're still selling off a bit. Yeah, we're, we've come down to 32. We had a little bit of a bottom here, so we'll see. Let's see if that was anything important in the S&P uh, so far. We'll just pull up a uh, pull up a chart here. That's that's nothing more than a 50% retracement. And if we take a look at what the uh, what the AI is signaling for, it looks like we're going to have some type of a of a little rally here. Sometime 12 o'clock is the key time to uh, pay attention to it. So we'll we'll watch that uh, for sure. Oh, I think we got a break coming up here. When we get back, we'll uh, cover the last few things that we have to look at. If you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, the question was, do I have any regrets? Actually, no. If I had to do it over again, 
do pretty much the same thing. Get to the fork in the road, you take the one you think, and you do the best you can. But the one regret that I did have was in the spring of 1976, I had quit Eli Lilly, had started trading full time, and I had a huge position in uh, oil and soybean oil and soybean meal and soybeans. And my beloved grandmother passed away on a Thursday, and that there was a giant report coming out on a Monday, and they scheduled her a funeral for Monday afternoon, and I was in California, and she died in the little town where I was born, Clinton, Indiana. And so I had to arrange to try to get to that funeral, and I had to be at that report. We don't have the data like we had now, folks. We were working off of Reuters, and I had a very large position. So I had to stay in California until noontime, and then finally get on a plane and get back. I didn't make the funeral. Uh, I got back for the services afterwards and everything, and I was thinking about it, and I thought about it for a long time, had some psychological uh, hang-ups about it, but overall uh, I had a very interesting uh, event happened that uh, made everything come clear. But that was the only thing that I really regretted is not being there for my grandma when they put her in the ground there in the little uh, – Pesavento plot there in Clinton, Indiana, up on the top of the hill overlooking the old Wabash River. That's probably the only regret that I've had. I've made some silly decisions, of course, like most people do. But uh, other than that, I don't think there's too much of a uh, regrets. You can't look backward, folks. You have to look forward. That's really about the only thing that you can really do when you're trading and also, you know, in, in life, too. you got to stick with the decisions you make, and that's pretty much it. Try to do the best you can. Try not to hurt anybody. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless as Tony Robbins says and we will see you guys tomorrow we will have our good friend Arch Crawford will be talking to us about all these things that are happening between the 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th there's a lot of stuff folks I mean there really is we need to really really need to pay attention to that because these markets are at very very critical levels so let's remember to do that 